of the heavens and the earth and the seas and everything that in them is Lord unto you are we gathered reveal secrets to us may our hearts indict a good matter and may we leave this class better than the way we came and Lord whatever burden your children came with may they never go home with it Father I thank you because I know you hear me all the time and I give you all the glory because you have never failed in Jesus mighty name Amen, Amen. Amen. Champion Sapphire, Shad Kuru, Shad Muzozo, Shad Mafura, Shad Onction. They all mean anointing in different languages. Amen. Amen. We want to thank the person of the Holy Spirit for the privilege to be here. Say thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. And also we want to thank our most holy father, Papa Joshua Aguila. Say we love you, Papa. And happy Father's Day to our Papa. Say happy Father's Day. Yes. Yes. Well, you sound like you're upset. Happy Father's Day to our Papa. Yeah. Women celebrate a lot in the year. So let's celebrate our Papa. Amen. Say happy Father's Day, our Papa. Yeah. Praise God. And yesterday we had the privilege to talk with him and he was praying for every one of us here. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. All right, let's stand to our feet. Let's walk up to 15 persons. 15 is triple grace. And say to someone, it's so nice to see you. It's so very nice to see you. No, 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 no. 
Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's take our seats. Amen. 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 We will continue after the service. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's take our seats, please. Praise God. Amen. Okay. Happy Father's Day to our fathers in our midst. Amen. Happy Father's Day to them. Happy Father's Day to our daddy. Amen. Amen. All right. You know, when we try to talk to people concerning Christianity, the name that really comes to mind is the name Jesus. Yes, sir. And it's sad that over the years, many Christians have not been able to put it in context when it comes to who Jesus is. Now, if you ask many Christians, who is Jesus? What they usually say, which is very common, in Nigeria, in different parts of the world, even here in America, what they usually say is, Jesus is God. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, the, the unfortunate thing with that remark is that the very same you who said Jesus is God is the same you who said he was born by a human being. Yes, sir. Because Mary is a human. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So if Jesus is God Almighty and Mary is a human being, how can the created give birth to the creator? <laughs> what does that make Mary? That means she's greater. Please answer me. I believe you are not a stupid person. God give you brains. So you mean Jesus? Okay, Jesus gave you brains. <laughs> so if you say Jesus is God Almighty, you know, preachers say that. And then they talk about the virgin birth, Mary. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. She gave birth to God Almighty. 
Did you notice even Mary asked the angel, how can it be when I've never had any intimacy with a man? And the angel said, the Holy Spirit yes, sir. will overshadow you, right? Yes, yes, sir. yes, sir. yes, sir. yes sir. Okay, so Jesus, we preachers say, is God Almighty. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Mary is a human. Yes, sir. And Mary is created by God Almighty. <laughs> yes, sir. Who gave birth to God Almighty. Yes, sir. Overshadowed by the Spirit of God. Yes, sir. Now, who owns the Spirit? God Almighty. God Almighty. <laughs> you already lost the people. Yes, and many just, they tell you, you know what? Just leave it alone. It's a mystery. <laughs> you heard from Peter say, yes, it's a mystery. <laughs> They just, they just focus on yourself. Yeah. Live for him. Yeah. Now, how can you successfully live for someone you don't really know and much less even understand? Yes, sir. And then they say, believe in his name and be saved. First of all, I need to understand his origin yes. <laughs> before I know what to believe. Yes, sir. Actually, it's not the fault of the people who listen to that nonsense. Some say you call it a nonsense. It is, because it doesn't make sense. Yes, sir. What, what is a nonsense? Some some nonsense. nonsense. Make sense. <laughs> so it's a nonsense, yes, right? Oh, nonsense, nonsense. God Almighty <laughs> was born by a human being, <laughs> created by God Almighty, <laughs> engaged to a fool <laughs> who wanted to secretly push her away. <laughs> no. So let's begin to look at the subject, who is Jesus? Who is Jesus? And um, let's explain him to yes, you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And um, and of course, some don't go that extreme to say Jesus is God. They'll start by saying he's the son of God. Okay. But what does that mean? as the Son of God. Yes, sir. Now, you see, the, the, you know, people say the Bible is the only book without mistakes. Mm. It's not true. Yes, sir. <laughs> and I'll tell you why it is not true, because it is what I preach every day. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. The Bible has many mistakes. Yes, sir. Yeah. And that is the reason for teaching. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The right interpretation. Yes, sir. And the reason why the Bible has mistakes is because it was originally not written in English. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So you need to yes, understand that. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Because Jesus is not an American, he was not a he was not a Christian. <laughs> and Jesus is not British. <laughs> you understand? Jesus was a Jew. Yes, and he never spoke English. Yes, sir. When he walked the face of the earth, he did not speak English. Yes, sir. Now, the reason why I'm saying that is because there is the tendency to think that the Bible does not make, does not have any mistakes. Yes, but how can you say the Bible doesn't have any mistake when all the writers of all the books of the Bible yes, sir. Yes, sir. were not we're not even Englishmen. So true. That's true. That's true. And mind you, the English translation of the Bible is the 13th translation. Mm -hmm. So which means the first original translations from the Hebrew and the Greek was not in English. Yeah, it's true. The first English translation of the Bible is the Old King James. Yes, sir. And that became the 13th version of the Bible. Yeah, listen. Yes, sir. Pick the word God. We say God, 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 God. Yes, sir. It's adopted into English, but it's not an English word. It's a yes, German sir. word yes, that was adopted into English. Yes, sir. Like depot, yes. which is a French word adopted into English. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You see? And to the Germans, God means object of worship. But is God an object? No. no. But it was just one of the ways they could describe yes, him because they don't know him. All right, so let's begin by understanding who Jesus is. Yes, sir. Because 
many of you look forward to seeing him. Yes, Someone say, are you saying you don't look forward to seeing him? He has visited me three times. <laughs> Physically, he yes, walked sir. into the room to sit down and talk to me. So I've seen him already. <laughs> Maybe it is you that is still here to see him. But who is he? Yes, sir. Who is he? Let's get to know him. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Because remember, Apostle Peter said, grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God first yes, and then the knowledge of Jesus next. Which means they are not the same. Now, Peter, if I go there, go to 2 Peter chapter 1 so that you don't think I'm making it up. <laughs> 2 Peter chapter 1 verses 1. Verses 2, sorry. <laughs> go to verses 2. Now, just be patient, all right? Don't be in a hurry in your mind. Now it says grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God. You see that? And what? And. What is end? A conjunct. Joining two nouns now. Two things together. Is it through the knowledge of God and of Jesus? See, they are not the same. So God is not Jesus. And this is written by Peter the Apostle that Jesus handed over to. Yes, sir. So he couldn't have made that mistake to call Jesus God Almighty. So why do preachers do so? If they are one and the same, why is he telling you you need two knowledge? Grace, he says, and peace. Be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God. And of Jesus. Now, if this is true, then we need both knowledge. Yes, Let's get to know who God is. Yes, sir. And then also get to know who Jesus is. Yes, sir. And the Jesus part is what we want to begin to talk to you about. Yes, sir. Right? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, I did mention initially that there are people who seem to call the Bible a perfect book. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. If it is a perfect book, how come not everyone reads it? Uh, not everyone who has even read it is perfect. No. Reading it is not the thing. It is the interpretation. Yes, sir. What you have been taught. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's why he says, study. study. To show yourself approved unto God. Then you now become a workman that needs not be ashamed. Rightly dividing, he says, the word of truth. So if you need to rightly divide the word of truth, it means that something is wrong that needs to be corrected. Yes. That's why he told you to study, not yes, read. Sir. Reading is not studying. Yes, sir. So he's telling you, engage your mind. Yes, sir. Now, for instance, the old King James has 54 mistakes. Yes, sir. Other newer versions today of the Bible has over 250 mistakes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But, but let's begin to pick some of the mistakes. Yes, sir. Number one, there were two thieves by Jesus, right? Yes, sir. When he was hanging on the cross. Yes, sir. And one said, save us. Yes, sir. I think the guy on the right said, save us. Yes, sir. You say you are the holy man, why don't you save us, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And then the other guy said, leave him. He's a holy man. He didn't do any wrong like we did. Yes, sir. Then he yes, turned yes, sir. and said, Master, remember me in thy paradise. kingdom, in paradise. Yes, sir. That's Luke chapter 23, verses 43. Jesus now said to him, now here's the mistake. Verily, verily, I say unto you, today you will be with me in paradise. Today. Now, the same preacher who talk about the purity of Jesus will tell you when Jesus hung on the cross, he went to hell. Yes. Yes, Have you not heard? Yes, yes, yes. And how long was he in the grave? Yes. Three days. So how can he tell the guy, today you will be with me in paradise? When he, Jesus, in Matthew chapter 12, verses 40, Matthew 12, verses 40, he said to Jonah, he said, as Jonah 
was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. So also must the Son of Man be in the grave three days and three nights. Now, if this is true, which we know it is, then Jesus couldn't have said to the guy, today you will be with me in paradise. Somebody said, so what is the mistake? Go there. Luke 23, verses 43. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Let's, let's just correct that mistake. Yes, sir. Yes, Although sir. you may not be able to change it in your Bible. Yes, it's already printed, but just know it. Yes, sir. Uh, Jesus said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee. You see that comma? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You see that comma? Yes, sir. That's yes, sir. the mistake now. Wow. Because it will read, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Today thou shalt be with me in paradise. But we know he did not go to heaven that day. Yes, sir. He yes, went sir. three days after. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, shift the comma to today. After today. After today. Yes, so it will read what? Verily, yes, verily, I say unto thee, today, today you will be with me in paradise. Yes, so it's even that comma is already a mistake. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So how can you say the Bible does not have a mistake? So say maybe it was just a typographical error. And it circulated all over the world. We can give you many, many. This is just the one you can probably access. Mm. Another mistake again is, my God, my God, why had thou forsaken me? Right? Yes, sir. When, yes, sir. He, when he hung on the cross, he said, he lie, he lie, he must he Right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, the interpretation of a lie, a lie, he must he is the mistake. Oh, wow. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. Because the Bible says, because uh, what was interpreted as a lie, a lie, le mas, a was in Hebrew. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's what the Bible says. Yes, sir. In, um, in Matthew chapter 27. Mm -hmm. Right? Yes sir. yes, sir. But then the Bible now says the people by the cross were Hebrews themselves. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's what the Bible says. Yes, the priests themselves were they not Jews? Yes, sir. They, they were Hebrews. Yes, sir. Then, if Jesus said a lie, a lie, le mas, a yes, sir. and in Hebrew it means my God, my God, why are thou forsaking me? Yes, sir. Why were the Hebrews interpreting it as he's calling Elijah? Yes, sir. Mm. If what Jesus said is Hebrew, mm -hmm. why are they mistaking it for Elijah? Mm. If what you say Jesus said that was written there is Hebrew, why are the Hebrews themselves saying he's calling Elijah? Does that make sense? Yes, sir. It doesn't make sense to no. me now or to them. To them, right? <laughs> Come on, man. You speak English. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. If I say go, and you interpret go to, to me, bring me a glass of water. Wow. Does that make sense? No. Go to Matthew 27. Yeah, let's look at that. There, um, there are countless mistakes like that. Like we said, the O King James has 54. But the other newer versions of the Bible uh -huh. is full of mistakes. And, and God likes it that way. That's the amazing thing. God likes the mistakes there. Because it is one way you can consciously, deliberately decide to study. Yes, sir. To now know what was being said. That's why sometimes when we're teaching you, we can say, okay, let's go into the Hebrew. This is what the Hebrew said. Or this is what the Greek said. Yes, sir. So that you can understand what was originally said because these people did not speak English. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. For instance, you say, Pharaoh said, Pharaoh, let my people go. Is that, did, did Moses speak English? No, sir. Yes, sir. But he probably said something close to that, right? Yes, <laughs> what I'm trying to say is that when you, when you pick native languages, like for some of us who come from Africa, yes, or like let's pick Creole that is close to America. There's a way you can say something in Creole. Yes, yes, sir. You may not be able to 100% yes, yes, translate it into English. Yes, sir. Would you? Yes, sir. Do you know when you say go, call me that boy, in Nigeria, that's pigeon. Yes. But it's good English. Yes, sir. Because in pigeon, we say go, call me that boy. Yes, that's true. <laughs> But I mean, the English will say, go, call me that boy. 
which is correct English. Yes, but in Nigeria, I'll say, go call me that boy. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's bad English yes, in Nigeria. And the, 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 the problem now with the Nigerian English is there's no comma. Yeah. Yeah. The yes, English will put a comma, go, call me that boy. Yeah. Nigeria says, go call me that boy. Yeah. The yeah. same yeah. words. Yeah. You see? <laughs> okay, let me show you something. Um, where did I tell you to open to? So, must you tell us about Jesus? Why are you telling us about? No, you need to understand that there are mistakes first. Yes, Do you understand? Yes, sir. Because you see, here's the point. If you don't know that those things exist, you will just be living in a lie. Yeah. You see? And when you live in that lie, it's very painful. Okay. Look at... Um, Now, first of all, who were the people who wanted Jesus dead? The chief priests and the uh, scribes. Right? When you look at verses 1 to 3. Yes, sir. Right? Yes, sir. So, which means they were Hebrews. Yes, sir. Because you have to be a Hebrew from the tribe of Levi to be a priest. Yes, sir. And these were the people who wanted Jesus dead. And they followed, it, they followed him to where he was nailed to make sure. This thing was really done. Yes. <laughs> okay, now look at verses 45. Now from the sixth hour, there was darkness over all the land. Read with me. One, two, go. Now from the sixth hour, there was darkness over all the land. Unto the ninth hour. Now that means for three hours. Yes, sir. Okay, read. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice, saying, Yeah, read verses 47. Was he calling Elijah? No. So, which means here, you are looking at, even at the, at the cross, at the cross, yes, sir. even what Jesus literally said was not even understood. So, if Jesus was physically present, and some of the things he said, was not even understood. Yes, How about what is now transliterated in writing for you mm. over many generations? And you think you are accurate with it? Misunderstood. Okay, yeah. let's see what Jesus even said about yes, the way he talked. Yes, Go to... Um, 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 um. And, and these people, they were waiting for Elijah to come. They said, let's see whether Elijah will come. He's calling for Elijah. No. Go to John chapter 8. Go to John chapter 8. Go to John chapter 8. Look at verses 43. John chapter 8, verses 43. Read. Why are you reading as though you are disappointed? Stop, stop, Why are you reading as though you are disappointed? I didn't write the Bible, it's there. Okay, so read with me now. Why don't you go? Why do you not understand my speech? Even the words you cannot hear my words. You see that? This is Jesus talking. He said, why is it that you don't understand my speech? So he had that problem already with people. This was him physically with the people. And what makes you think? You understand everything that has been written. So you see, those who foolishly say, I, I don't need to go to church. I can stay at home and just read my Bible. No. You are a fool. Mm -hmm. Even when Jesus was physically present, mm -hmm. when he was talking to the people, yes, they did, he had a problem with them. Yes. Yes, because they never understood. Yes, he said, why don't you understand my speech? He said, it's not your fault. Because you cannot hear my word. 
And see his conclusion. Go to verses 44. See what he now says. Ye are your father the devil. Stop. Man. I, I thought Jesus was so nice. He never offended anyone. You know, they, they paint that picture. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That Jesus is so nice. He doesn't get angry. And you, brother, see you get angry. Jesus doesn't get angry. I've never called you a devil. He is calling them a devil. <laughs> he said, because you don't understand my speech, your father is a devil. Ah. Uh, must we understand what you are saying? <laughs> he said, you are, your father must be a devil. Because I came for your service. I even cared to listen. I'm still trying to even understand what you're saying. Because the things Jesus was always saying were things they have never heard before. Like some of you, when you come here sometimes, yes. like, <laughs> whatever it is. I see it in the Bible, but there are things I've never heard before. Yes, and the people, you know, some people are very locomotive in their understanding. They are very slow in understanding. And Jesus, he got angry. Why don't you understand my speech? As though the disciples who even followed him understood. Remember, this is the reason why Jesus always spoke to the people in parable. Yes, yes, sir. yes sir. Don't think he really wanted to speak to them in parable. It was because he came to a conclusion that these people lack understanding. That's why he started talking to them in parable. And the disciples came in Matthew chapter 13. Uh, go to Matthew chapter 13. Yes, sir. In, in verses 10. They, they came, after Jesus gave them the parable of the sower, they came to Jesus. He says, excuse me, sir. Because every time, you're always saying the kingdom of God is like this. The kingdom of God is like this. The kingdom, parable, parable, parable. See what the disciples said. And the disciples came and said unto him, why do you speak unto them in parables? Notice, it's in plural, parables. That means they've been taking track. Each time the people come, Jesus will not talk with clear speeches. He'll be talking in shades. So they said, why do you talk in fact? The disciples challenged him. See what he said. He answered and said, because <laughs> it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom. But to them, it is not. I don't owe them clarity of speech. I thought you came to save everyone. If you really did come to save everyone, we should be able to understand your mission. So explain it to us. You know, <laughs> one time I was invited to a TV station in New York and I was asked what my mission is as a preacher. I said, preach. I'm preaching. <laughs> Everybody is preaching. He said, no, you must have a tailored vision. I said, I don't have a vision. I was sent here by my boss. I'm doing what he told me to do. Why do you think I must have a vision? How many visions have worked? <laughs> because you can have your own vision and a policy from the U.S. government will cancel it. Or the policy from any country in the world will cancel your vision, right? When you own a business, is that not a beautiful vision? But if the vision, if the policy that were initiated does not favor the business, do you still have a vision? <laughs> no, patronize. That's why we taught you a lesson on patronizing what works. Align with other visions that are already working, that have come to be accepted. See, be a man with vision. Do you know how many books you have written on vision? And yet, how many are successful? You buy those books, you build a large, large library, which is good. But complement it with money. Yes, sir. Yeah. You understand? Don't just build a nice library. <laughs> there was one guy who said, I don't worry myself with books. I have, I have a bar, a wine bar in my living room. I don't want books. <laughs> you read the book, come and work for me. I drink the wine to release my stress, he said. I looked at him, I said, you are funny. But here's the point. I'm not saying books are bad. But I'm saying that here, Jesus is trying to make us understand some things. That even when he was physically present, people never understood him. And that is why now we can understand the extremities people can go. The extremes people can go to say, Jesus is God Almighty. 
uh, Jesus is this. In fact, some will even tell you which is the easiest, the most common, the only begotten of God, right? Yes. The only begotten yes. Son of God. Yes. 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 Okay, if Jesus is the only begotten Son of God, I'd like you to look at Genesis chapter 6. And you know, the thing is that, you know, we preachers, we are wonderful people, you know. But you know, sometimes um, people try to see the preacher as a mega superhuman. Yes. No. He's still a human who has the spirit of God on him. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, look at verses 1. And it came to pass, let's read to verses 2. One to go. And it came to pass when then he gave them all to God on the face of the earth, and God has brought all to them, that the sons of God saw the Lord. You Sons of God. God always had sons. So why do you say Jesus is the only begotten son of God? This is Genesis chapter 6. Now, the oldest book of the Bible is not Genesis. It's actually the book of Job. Now, go to the book of Job. Let's read from verse 6. God always had sons. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, read. Okay, now let's read. One to go. Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present their child before the Lord. So God always had sons. Yes, yes, so why do you say Jesus is the only begotten son of God? God always had sons. Go to chapter 2 of the book of Job. Let's read from verses 1. Read. Okay, go to. Um, do you see one more proofs again? Or oh, you you are satisfied with what I've showed? You. Okay, you are yeah. good. Okay, but why? Now the question then becomes: Did Jesus really say to Nicodemus, "For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son"? That becomes the question. Because Jesus Himself. The Bible says it was his custom to study the law and the books of the prophets. Yes, sir. Which means Jesus was very, very studious. Yes, he yes, was schooled sir. in the things of God. Yes. If he was, why would he make that mistake to say he was the only begotten son of God when God already had sons? No. Now, I know you may want to say, well, these are angels. Jesus is not an angel. Okay, let's go with Jesus saying to Nicodemus, he is the only begotten son of God. Now, if you ask me, do I disagree with that? I may not disagree with you, but I may argue with you in a deductive way. Yes, sir. But let me tell you why I will agree with you. Now, the sons of God being talked about here that we read yes, sir. are actually angels. Yes, sir. But angels were called sons of God. Yes. Now, Jesus is not. Yes, but why was Jesus, why would Jesus refer to himself, if that is what he really said to Nicodemus, as the only begotten son of God? Well, the reason is because he was born by a woman. Mm. Oh, yes, sir. He was born by a woman. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But yes, sir. being the only begotten son of God, is not even what made Jesus mighty or great. That's not what made Jesus great. Because Jesus with his mouth, in Matthew chapter 11, I think verses 11, Matthew 11 verses 11, said John the Baptist was the greatest ever born. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And he, Jesus speaking, was born yes, sir. by a woman. Yes, sir. He said of all born of women, Jesus said, John the Baptist is the greatest. Yes, sir. So, you see, yeah. being the begotten is not even what changed people's lives. Mm. 
Go to John 3.16. John 3.16. Before I begin to tell you who Jesus is, let's tell you who Jesus is not. Yes. That you have believed that has not worked. Because the truth of the matter is this. If you believe wrong, you will surely live wrong. Yes. And if you live wrong, you will marry wrong, die wrong, go to school wrong. No, you can't die and not go to school. No, you will, marry, <laughs> you will live wrong. <laughs> Go to school wrong, marry wrong, get the wrong job, live the wrong life, retire wrong, grow old and then being thrown into old people's home, wrong, <laughs> and then die wrong and probably buried wrong. <laughs> and that's the end of wrong believers. Jesus being the only begotten of the Father is not what even brought salvation. It's not what saves a man. That does not save anyone. Look at John 3.16. Maybe you have never really looked at that verse of scripture. You quote it, but you've never really looked at it. Read it. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believed in him should not now, question. What will prevent you from perishing? Believing, Believing in him. Yes, sir. Not him being the son. Yes, sir. It is your belief. Yes, sir. So you are still powerful. Yes, sir. And yet you want your mother to be a virgin to give birth to you. You are still very powerful. Yes, Even though Jesus was born of a virgin. Yes, the salvation power is still in your hands. Yes, sir. Your belief. That's what will stop you from tragedy or, you see, listen, what would determine whether you'll be a victor or a victim is what you believe yes, sir. Yes, sir. and who you believe in. Yes, sir. But if you say you believe in Jesus, what do you know about him? Because he already told us, for God so loved the world, that word, he gave. His word, oh, his only begotten son, son, that word. What's this word? Highlight it for me. Not shall, should. What is should? Is the past tense of shall. That means it's a settled matter. Ah, let me talk to you. This one's a fair. It's a settled matter. He says you will not perish. So if you ever suffer, any form of perishing, it means you probably never believed. You, you, you thought you believed because it felt good to want to believe like the way others believe. And I've met many Christians like that. Say, are you a Christian? Say, I'm a Christian. Why? Because I was born into a Christian home. My father is a Christian. My mother is a Christian. I was baptized a Christian. Now, do you think that's what makes you a Christian? No. no. See here. He said if you can believe, yes, you will not suffer condemnation. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, let's begin to know this guy. Because he said you should believe in him. Yes, sir. Right? Yes, sir. So, let's know who you and I want to believe in. Right? If I tell you believe me, don't you want to know who I am before? Yes, sir. Right? Yes, sir. You know. So let's know the guy. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So why are you calling him guy? <laughs> let's know the man. Yes, sir. So let's start by going to Luke. Now, Luke chapter 1. Go to Luke chapter 1. Yes, sir. I want to tell you something. Yes, sir. Jesus, when you ask people today, who is Jesus? They say, he is the son of God. No. Actually, that's not who he is. Yes, sir. That's what he is called. Yes, sir. But that's not who he is. Yes, sir. Luke chapter 1. Let's start from verses 26. Now, read with me. And pay attention to the tenses. Yes, sir. And listen to yourself. Yes, sir. Now, I'm not, let me tell you something. The first time Jesus appeared to me in Brooklyn, he told me something, which I have said to you many times. 
But I still want to just refresh your mind since we want to talk about him. I recall when he came that day, when he was about to leave, he told me, never try to convince anyone. And I was surprised he told me that. <laughs> you want me to preach, but you don't want me to convince people? He said, no, don't try to convince people. I said, why not? He said, because if you do and they are not convinced, you'll be frustrated. So I asked him, what should I do? He said, just tell them the truth. Yes. And it's up to them to decide whether yes. they want to believe it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So I asked yes. him, is that how you did it? He said, that's how I did it. Wow. Yes, sir. He said, just tell them the truth. Your words will bear witness against them, whether they believe it or not. True. But don't try to convince anyone. So I'm not trying to convince you. You can still believe what you want to believe, all right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Let's just have a nice time. Yes, sir. At least you can keep your old beliefs. We can live in the truth. Because we told you, if you believe wrong, you live wrong, go to school wrong, marry wrong, live wrong, have children wrong, go to work wrong, retire wrong, <laughs> die wrong. No, no, before dying, go to old people's home wrong, <laughs> and then die wrong, buried wrong with the wrong casket. <laughs> Waiting for the rapture. <laughs> and God is oh, God is looking at you. What should we do with you? You this wrong guy. <laughs> so let's know. Because he said, my people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. Then he said, true knowledge. True knowledge. Not true prayer. True knowledge shall the just be delivered. So let's know what we should know. So that we can live in perfect liberty. Now, see you. And in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin engaged, a spouse means engaged, to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. Verse 28. And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail thou that are highly favored, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women. Okay. Read on. And when she saw him, she was troubled and saved. Stop. Read the previous verse again. Blessed art thou amongst women. Right? But he didn't say blessed is the fruit of thy womb, holy Jesus. <laughs> you know, the Roman Catholics add that part. And it's so nice. But it's not in the Bible. It's nice to say, but it's not in the Bible. You know, blessed are thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. You've always thought it's in the Bible. See, it's not there. But blessed are thou amongst women, it's, it's nice. It's good. Okay, let's read on. Don't get offended. All right, let's read. And when she saw him, she troubled at the same, and cast in her mind one manner of salutation. Okay, verse 30 now. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. With who? With who? I thought it was, it was with Jesus. With who? With Okay, let's read. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth the Son, and shall call his name Jesus. Now, mark the word son. Now, who is Jesus? Someone say, he's the son of God. No, that's what he is called. That's not who he is. That's the difference between you and I. So let's know something beyond the sonship. Okay, read. Read. He shall be great and shall be called the son of the highest. He repeats it again. That is what he is called. That's not who he is. Okay, let's read on. And the Lord God shall come to him, the God of God of David. Wow. Jesus has a father. Yes, sir. But I thought Jesus is God Almighty. Wow. He now has a father. Yes, sir. Now, who is talking here? Angel Gabriel. Yes, sir. Come on, man. Right? Yes, sir. Angel Gabriel yes, sir. said, This Jesus, his father is David. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Wait, is David greater than God now? No. <laughs> Wait, I don't, I don't agree with you. Because if you call Jesus God Almighty, 
And the angel is telling Mary, Jesus will sit on the throne of his father. uncle. Is he uncle or father? father. <laughs> I thought he said he will sit on the throne of his uncle. No, the throne of his father, David. He mentions the name, David. Not Marcus. David. Not Yahweh. Not Jehovah. David. Then why would you call Jesus God Almighty? They know you are too busy to read. So they lie to you. Because your schedule will not let you have time to study. You are too busy. You have homework, you have two jobs, you work at Starbucks and Walmart, no time. <laughs> and I'm not angry with you. I'm just saying you are too busy. Now, let's see whether what Luke reported in Je Gabriel said was correct. Let's see whether he was correct. Go to Romans chapter 1. I'd like us to read from verses 1 to 3. Romans chapter 1, verses 1 to 3. So when you say, who is Jesus? Or when somebody asks you, who is Jesus? And you say, he is the son of God. Mm -mm. That's what he is called. Yes, sir. That's not who he is. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. There's a difference. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Let's read. 1, 2, go. Ve 1 to 3. Once. So, read again. Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated unto the gospel of God, which he had promised before and was in front of the Holy Spirit, concerning his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, which was made of the seed of David. What? You see that? Yes, Jesus is the seed of David. Then why is he called the son of God? Good question. It's called adoption. God adopted him as his own. But he is of the seed of David. But they adopted of God. The same way you are of your father's seed, your biological father's seed. But when you became a Christian, you became the adopted of God. So Jesus is not different from you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He was the first person God tried it out with. And it worked. Yeah. That's why now Jesus received the spirit. But now question. When did God adopt Jesus? When did it happen? Yes, yes, sir. Yeah. yes sir. Matthew chapter 3. Let's read from verses 13 to verses 17. Verse 13 to verses 17. You mean Jesus is a human being like me? Exactly, yes. yes sir. And that is why whatever was possible with Jesus is possible with you. Yes, sir. And stop giving Jesus that, oh, you know he's the Holy One. So are you. Yes, sir. Were you not born by a parent, by your mother? Yes, sir. Was Jesus not born by a mother? Yes, sir. So we qualify. Yes, Somebody say, his mother was a virgin, my mother was not. No, 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 no. You are funny. No, that's not what it means. Listen, the word virgin, that's another mistake. Wrong, okay, let me not call it a mistake. There's a wrong interpretation for the word virgin in the Bible today. Yes, sir. The word virgin does not mean somebody who has not had sexual intercourse. Although Mary said she didn't. But that is not why she is a virgin. According to Paul, in 1 Corinthians chapter 7, we may not have the time to look at that now. All right? But you can read 1 Corinthians chapter 7. Read the whole chapter for yourself. Where he addressed the subject of the married and the unmarried. And the unmarried were the ones he called virgins. Not a lady who has not had intercourse. A lady who is single, in Greek interpretation, is called virgin. Yes, sir, yes, sir. Not someone who has not had intercourse. You see, English. Yes, sir, yes, sir. English. Yes, English. English. And English has been a blessing to the world. Yes, but when it comes to matters like this, English has to go back to check what was originally said. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. 
I, I hope that's respectful enough. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm able to communicate with you now in English. Yes, so English has blessed the world. Yes. Yes. Truly. Truly. But when it comes to the truth of scriptures, there are certain things English could not capture. And English language will even tell you, go and check the manuscript, the original script, and see what was written. English will not tell you not to check the Hebrew. English will never forbid you from checking the Greek, what was originally said. Because that was the language the writers of the Bible spoke. Yes, but if you just take it on the surface as this is what it is, you are, then you'll be missing it big time. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's why many Christians today don't have victories in their lives. Yeah. Because they believe wrong. And then live wrong and die wrong. Mm -hmm. See, here. Where did I tell you to open to? Matthew chapter 3. Yes, sir. Matthew chapter 3. Did I say Matthew chapter 10? Ten? Uh, yes. Is that what I said? No, 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 that means I'm ahead. In Matthew chapter 10, he ordained the apostles. Okay. So that means I'm ahead. Oh, okay. Matthew chapter 3. Matthew chapter three. Go to verses 13. Yes, sir. Matthew 3, 13. Yes, sir. I want to read to verses 17. Yes, See what? Then come Jesus. Jesus. Read with me. Then, then come Jesus. Jesus. From God. That means he allowed. Suffer them means he allowed him. Yes, yes, okay, yes. now let's read verses 16 to verses 17. This is, what is is? Present tense. At what age? 30. This was where Jesus was adopted. He is the biological seed of David. But the adopted of God. Just like you as the biological seed of, what's your father's name? <laughs> Sorry, mama. What's Ruben. It? Ruben. Ruben. You are the biological seed of Mr. Ruben, yeah. but the adopted daughter of God. Yeah. Yeah. That's what you are reading. Wow. Yes, sir. That's who Jesus was. Yeah. And that is why when he was tired, you were also tired. Mm -hmm. Because he is a biological seed. Yes, wow. When he was hungry, we you were also hungry. Right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Do you know what God said? God said, if I'm hungry, I will not come to you. When you're hungry, you know where to go to. Yes, <laughs> yeah. Jesus was so hungry that he cursed a tree who did not give him that did not give him fruit. Right? Yes, the guy was tough. And when he asked, and you know, he was so concerned about what people thought of him. He asked his disciples, well, who do men say that I am? They say, ah, if you know what people are saying about you, they say you are Elijah. Now, was Elijah nice to people? No. <laughs> so that means Jesus was not really friendly. Then they said, he's what? Jeremiah. Was Jeremiah friendly with the people? No. That's how people were seen. Then the worst of all was what? John the Baptist, who was cursing the people every day. Jesus said, wow. <laughs> this is how these people see me. Elijah, Jeremiah, John the Baptist. They didn't even say Hosea. They didn't even say Isaiah. And Jesus liked to read the writings of Isaiah. And the people never... <laughs> Which Isaiah? You are not Isaiah. You are Jeremiah. You are cursing people every day. <laughs> and then he now asks the disciples, all right, you've told me what people think about me, but what do you think about me? And they all kept quiet. <laughs> yeah. Excuse me, sir. Um, let me go and see Sister Marie. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we have house fellowship. Jesus said, no, come on, come on. Tell me, what do you say about me? <laughs> Only Simon spoke. Yes. You are the son of God. Yes. And Jesus said, correct. 
<laughs> I like that. I like what you said. <laughs> and shortly afterwards, the same Simon, he looked at him, he said, get thee behind me, Satan. Uh, <laughs> you are just, you are just angry. <laughs> In Nigeria, you say this person is a temple. That means you are too temperamental. Uh, this one is a te thermometer, right? Yeah. So, you will go up, you will come down. Yeah. Jesus was just not predictable. The disciples, every time they woke up in the morning, they say, ah, look, man, everybody. And you know, he was, <laughs> you would not want to call him a sadist. He would wake up and tell everybody, go. I want to be, I want to be left alone. They would say, ah, did you do, did you do anything wrong? Say, no, no, all of you go. I don't want to see your faces for now. Go. Ah, <laughs> why? He was a human, yes, and sir. still is. Yes, sir. So I say, but now he's a spirit. He's not. When they called him a spirit, he said, "I'm not a spirit." Yes, he said, "Spirits don't have flesh, flesh and, bones. and bones." Does he have flesh no. and bones? Yes. Now, what did Jesus say about God Himself? John chapter four, verse twenty-four. John chapter four, verses twenty-four. John chapter 4, verses 24. You see, the life of Jesus, yes, are you listening to me? Yes, yes, sir. There is one thing it epitomizes. Would you like to know? Yes, sir. Possibility. 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 We told you something yesterday. Apostle Peter said, he said, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And what is grace for? To help those in need. And Jesus was always helping. Possibility. A guy who came from the most unfortunate home. King David was no longer sitting on the throne. The distance between King David and Jesus is 1,400 years. King David had long gone 1,400 years before Jesus was conceived. Yes, sir. 14 generations. A generation is 100 years. So 14 generations is how many? Um, 1,400 years, sir. Please answer now. You, you know my... A generation is 100 years. Yes, sir. 14 generations is, is what? 1,400 years. That's the distance between Jesus and King David. Wow. Yet it's his seed. That's what the Bible said in Matthew chapter 1. 14 generations. Between Abraham and Jesus is two, two, four, 14, no, three, 14 generations. Three. That's 5,200 years between Abraham and Jesus. Go to Matthew chapter 1. Let me show you something. But see what Jesus said here in, sorry. See, see what Jesus said here in John chapter 4, verse 24. God is spirit. Yes, sir. But when Jesus was called a spirit, he said, I'm not a spirit. I have flesh and bones. I'm not a spirit. But God is a spirit. God is a spirit. He is not. So why do you call Jesus God Almighty? When Jesus said, God is a spirit, he is not. And that remark, when he said he's not a spirit, was when he rose from the dead. And that was not the first time they were calling him spirit. When he walked on the waters, they called him a spirit. He said, no, be of good cheer, it is I. And entered the boat. Ah. Possibility. Possibility. But if you keep excluding Jesus and say he's in a class all by himself, then you will never become what he became. Yet, you are without excuse. Because the same way you came into this world, biologically, is the same way he came. He was also carried for nine months. So. Not three days. Nine months. Like you are. Someone say, mine was seven months. It doesn't matter. <laughs> You were born. Yes, sir. Yes. Like he was. Yes, sir. Then you are without excuse. Yes, sir. And you know, so many of you who are so excited, looking forward to seeing the Lord God. I can't wait to meet the Lord God. Wait until he sees you. Then he will not tell you what he expected of you that you did not fulfill. Someone say, he expected us to preach. Listen, not everyone will preach. No. It's a settled fact. Yes, sir. 
Even in the Bible, not everyone preached. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So the preachers who are telling you everybody must be a preacher and preach the gospel is not true. Yes, sir. Not everyone will preach. Because to preach, you must have the spirit. Not everyone will receive the spirit yes. to preach. It's the truth. Yes. But there is one thing God expects from everyone. Do the impossible. That's what Jesus did. Where did I tell you? Where was I going to show you? Just? No. There was one place I was going to show you just now. Hmm? Matthew chapter 1. Look at verses 1. See? The book. This is Matthew who was a disciple of Jesus. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. See what he wrote about Jesus. One to go. The book of the generation of Jesus Christ. The son of David. The son of Abraham. You see that? The son of David. The son of Abraham. The distance between Abraham and Jesus is what? 4,200 years. Four years. And the distance between King David and Jesus, 1,400 years. And the distance between Jesus' resurrection and us now is how many? 2,000 years. So, just 500 years difference. And yet, Jesus was still called the seed of David. So, you belong to someone. Just don't belong to the seed of Judas Iscariot. It's the truth. Because if Jesus can come that distant, from that distant future, as the biological seed of David, mm. biological seed yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. of David, the Bible says, adopted by God as his son, yes, sir. then you are someone's seed. Yes, sir. Just let it be a good one. Yes, sir. <laughs> Listen, the people... Look up, please. The people who called Jesus, Elijah, um, Jeremiah, and John the Baptist, do you think they were wrong? No. When Elijah Gabriel came to Mary, I'm sorry, Zachariah, what did he say? John the Baptist will, will come in the resemblance of. He said he will come with the spirit and power of Elijah. Yes, which means John the Baptist was, was what? Elijah's seed. Yes, right? Yes, Where did Jesus receive the spirit? From John the Baptist. Yes, oh, that makes sense. You understand? Yes, so the people, they have read about how Elijah behaved. Yes, See, although Jesus is not wearing animal skin, but he talks like him. Because Elijah was someone who was very impatient with words. Yeah. He didn't like when people don't understand it. You should be a barbecue right now if you don't understand what I'm saying. He would throw fire and the person would be burnt off. He was that impatient. He would look at somebody. I said, good money, you didn't answer me. Your right leg will be twisted. He was that kind of... <laughs> So when we saw Elijah, Elijah is coming. <laughs> and Jesus too was also that way too. See, we're introducing this lesson. Let's get to know the guy. Yes, sir. Somebody said the man. Okay, let's get to know the man. And in getting to know the man, you can make adjustment as a man. Amen. And be that winner. Yes, sir. Listen. Jesus was born not in a hospital. You were born in a hospital with a birth certificate. Jesus had none. And yet made it. And you want to fail. You like to explain why things are not working. Remember, Joseph never accepted Jesus as his son. You have a father and mother that loves you and you are failing. You are without excuse. My <laughs> the guy won. He won. Hi. He insisted, see, I told you about the Jesus culture. We told you that, right? And the Jesus culture is this. He insisted on winning. See, my biological father was a pastor. I saw failure everywhere. And I said, I can't be like this. There is something he does not know. That's why I told you, if you believe wrong, you will die wrong. 
Because I could tell he believed wrong, yet he was a pastor. And I was not a member of his church. He pastored a church that I was not even a member, and I'm the firstborn. You can imagine, my biological father pastored a church, and I refused to be a member. Because I didn't see the victories in his life. I was a member of another church. <laughs> and I will come and see him. Because I didn't see the victory. Yes, sir. Insist on victory. Yes, sir. Where's Brother Joshua? Where's that Brother Joshua? No, not you. Mila. Where's Brother Joshua Mila? Right? Please stand up. He shared a testimony the last... Has he shared his testimony? Today, Today right? Yes, sir. When you called me, right? I was actually... At Jay-Z City, I was on the bridge when he called me and told me what the school told you. Right? What did I say? I said, don't give up. Let's insist on it. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Now he graduated. Yeah. Weeks later. Insist on victory. Yeah. We must win. We must win. Yeah. I don't need to know the school authority. Yes, I was driving. I was actually on Pulaski. Is it Pulaski? Yeah, bridge? Pulaski. On Jay-Z City. Yes, I still remember. That's where he called me. I said, how are you? First of all, I didn't even know it was him because I didn't store your number. <laughs> so he said he was the one. <laughs> he was trying to explain to me, so the school said, I have to do this. I said, no. You will graduate. Yes, sir. Insist. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And he crossed it. Yes, sir. It's time to win. It's time to win. Yeah. You need to insist on victory. Yes, sir. Study. That was the character of the life Jesus lived. Yes, That's the Jesus culture. Yes, you insist on victories. Yes, you start small, but you don't remain small. Yes, insist, I must make it. I, I must, must win. win. Because somebody said no, why are you crying? He only said no. Somebody else will say yes. yes so why do you have to cry? Yes, Anything makes you cry. So oh, he, he hurt me emotionally. He, he hurt my feelings. Which feelings? Where's the feeling? You hurt my feeling. Where's the feeling? Let me punch it. Everything. The things that makes you feel are the things you are very emotional about. Some of you don't know where some of us are coming from. One day we'll take a trip to Nigeria. I'll take you to where I grew up. Then you'll be amazed. If somebody can come from this kind of place to where we are today, then you are without excuse. You are without excuse. Yes, it's because you eat too much Wendy's. Too much four for four. <laughs> and you just finish eating burger and you are crying. Somebody, somebody hurt your feelings. <laughs> I met a lady like that. Oh, oh, I'm so sad. Oh, this and that. This thing. He did this to me. He did that to me. Right now, I'm just hungry. You are hungry? <laughs> I tell you. <laughs> I tell you. <laughs> I, I, I told your feelings oh, was, was hot. If it's hot, you have a bad time. <laughs> with, with hot feelings. I, I met another lady. I, I, I need a therapist. I said, you don't need therapist. You are crazy. What do you need therapist for? Therapist will collect money from you and listen to your nonsense. And then begin to seek therapy. You know, many therapists go for therapy too because your stories are killing them. <laughs> you come, it's like this. When I saw the spider, he's this, he's this. The therapist is wonderful. That's why when you call the therapist for the next session, he said, No, let's reschedule. They have rescheduled you how many times now? Don't you have sense? They are running away from you. <laughs> because the therapist is going for therapy. <laughs> <laughs> and the therapist comes. Oh, man. <laughs> One day, a lady came to see me for prayers. She said she was giving my phone number. So she called me. So I met her privately. She came to see me in the office. She said, I, I just want to let you know, I'm a therapist by profession. I said, you are? <laughs> I said, what do you need prayers for? I told you, you are solving problems in the world. She said, ah, 
Please. <laughs> I want to talk to you. And I still have some other friends too. <laughs> oh, come and see. I say, ah. You have a league. <laughs> league of therapies who need, who need spiritual therapy. <laughs> and she told me, believe me, when she told me her story, I said, so the people who come to see you, if they should have a hint of this story, they will not come again. She said, but I just have to do my job. I said, man. So I, I said, um, of course, you know, they can't tell you details of what they do and all that. But in a nutshell, what she was even trying to tell me is that sometimes some of the people who come to see them, who come to see these therapists, these therapists in their mind, they are even saying, your story is nice. If you know what I'm even going through in my own life. You are coming to tell a therapist about a bad divorce you just had, yet they paid you 30 million. The therapist is already divorced, not one dollar. And she say, eh, I st I'm, I'm, do you think I should increase child support? <laughs> Your problem is expensive. No, insist on winning. Yes, man. Congratulations, brother Joshua. I heard that story. Yeah, he insisted. We do not give up. If you lose a court case, file an appeal. We must win. Insist on winning. Yes, sir. Stop looking at. I don't have money to pay an attorney. No, insist. I must win this case. I must win this case. Yeah. If you lose in the lower court, go higher. Yes, there are more reasonable people there. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, judge this matter. But if you are wrong, say I'm sorry. You understand? Move on. But insist on winning. Yes, sir. Let's close. Aye. There is a Jesus culture you must begin to develop. Yes, sir. That's what this week is for. Yes, sir. The Jesus culture. Jesus culture. Where we insist. There's a sister, sister Anna, before she graduated with her master's, they were going to deny her one score. She had 100%, 100%. There was one score, the professor said she was going to give her 90. And she said, no, I deserve 100%. And she was actually going to sue. She told me, she said she was going to, you know the story now. She said she was going to sue the professor. But she, she reached out. They gave her 90. Is 90 not a good mark? <laughs> I had a D graduating from college. <laughs> For masters. She said, no, sir. She said she was going to sue. Then she spoke to me. I said, don't sue. She will still give you the 100. I said, she was only testing you. Send her, send her this email. And we told her, say this, say this, say this, say this. Appreciate who she is. And she did. And the, the lady walk, reached out to her and said she just wanted to, she has been hearing about her, she wanted to test her kind of person. But she discovered that she's an excellent person and that she's well behaved. Imagine if she had sued. Wow. And the professor gave her 100. 100. Oh. Wow. All the courses, 100%, 100%. Wow. So men are, are living already. Hundred <laughs> percent. I had a D. I was part of let my people go. <laughs> That's what the college knew us for. They called us let my people go, and we were six in number. D, and I was very happy. Ah, I bought drink for all my friends. <laughs> Say I've graduated. Is it you graduated? What? Did you? Say don't worry. <laughs> What did you graduate with? I said, don't worry, just drink. I've graduated. It's not easy. I'm the first in my family to go to college. It doesn't matter what I graduate with. I had a D. And the way the college, they carved it, they carved in Nigeria, the degrees. Yeah, she knows. She knows. First class, what do you call first class here? They write it casually in Nigeria. Third class. They will carve it. They will call an artist to carve it in your certificate. 
You cannot scrape it. <laughs> <laughs> they will construct it. And for me, I laminated it. I looked at it. I said, thank you, Lord. <laughs> this is beautiful. When I was getting a job in the bank, they said, can we see your certificate? I used my hand to cover that. <laughs> <laughs> Brother, wisdom is profitable to direct. He insists on victory. Yeah, when I went to do my master's in the UK, I had the best results. So, you see, start small but don't remain small. And just because somebody said no, doesn't mean you should be emotionally drained. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. What is no? Why should no give you a bad day? I win all the time. Why should no steal your joy? He insists. That's the Jesus culture. Study the life of Jesus. He insisted. That was what Mary taught him. The first miracle Jesus did was to turn water into wine. He was not willing to do it. What did Mary do? She insisted. Whatever he tells you to do, do it. And Jesus imbibed it and made it a culture. You insist. You insist. People who came to Jesus insisted on the miracle. They insisted. And they got angry when Jesus was reluctant. They had the right to. Because the Jesus culture is that you insist on winning. You're offended. You didn't get this job, even if you went for the interview. Insist, I must get a job. This month will not end without me getting a job. Man. You want to buy a house, right? They, you got a new house. They denied you many times, right? And you insisted. Right? They were even playing games. Now the house is yours. And, and the previous owner said to you, what did he say the previous owner said? You are just the best person to buy this house. And guess what? The previous owner now became a tenant. The previous owner became a tenant and paid rent to her. Insist on winning. Some of us are already living it. That's the Jesus culture. They say you cannot have a child. You say I must have children. Who said? The Bible says, who is he that speak it? When the Lord did not command it. Why? Because you are the one to command it. You are the Lord being talked about. Command what you want. Jesus said you shall have whatever you say. That's the Jesus culture. They are firing people. You say they cannot fire me. Insist. If you don't, you will retire early. At 65, you'll be in old people's home. Meanwhile, an 80 year old man is in the White House. <laughs> Think about it. Your grandpa, your grandpa is in old people's home. Yes, yeah, somebody of your grandpa's age is president. Yes, you are without excuse. Even your grandpa is without excuse. So the next time your grandpa says, You know, I'm old, you said, Grandpa, you are not old. Yes, sir. Somebody yes, sir. older is in the White House. Yes, sir. You are without excuse. And that guy, he even did it. He patronized the Jesus culture. He insisted. He, he contested three times and finally won. He insisted. That's the Jesus culture. Too many Christians today are weak and beggarly. Too weak and beggarly. Any small thing makes them cry. Any move moves them. <laughs> so emotionally drained. Too weak. God doesn't like those kind of people. The Lord said to Gideon as one man. One man, you will defeat the Midianites. One man. One man is enough. You and God, you are more than enough. Talk to the Lord now. Yeah. I'm more than enough. The Jesus culture must work for me. I insist on my victory. I insist on my miracle. In my school, I insist on my miracle. I insist on my grades. That I must have A's in my grades. In the game, I must be drafted. I insist on it. With scholarships, I get the best scholarships. I insist on it. With court cases, I win court cases. I insist on my victory. I insist. Hey, you are tired. Pray. I insist on my victory. I love the way you are. San Capati, Salo Copertene, Becitalis, Vili Acusa, Manco Foro Cotes, 
I insist on winning. I win all the time. 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 That's why I'm a success forevermore. I'm a success forevermore. I'm not a success for a season. I'm a success forevermore. I insist on winning. Every day is a great day for me. Every day is a great day for me. Kama Supres. Vilia Kasamanko Forces. Every day is a day of victory. For those of you who want to marry, say I will not remain single all my life. I will marry this year. Insist on your victory. Insist. Insist. Mantali Akusa Parties. My partner, wherever you are, come forth. Yeah. Insist on your victory. Malakar Momo Sofres. Listen, amen. Oh, last Sunday, right? Our precious brother proposed to Dickness' wife, right? But, 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 but did you notice something about the guy? The guy will not let the service end. He insisted, I need to do something. That's the Jesus culture. When you insist, you are not ashamed. You are too civilized. You are too sophisticated. Yet you carry a big problem. No, insist. I must win. I must win. Insist. That's the Jesus culture. That's the reason why we're telling you about Jesus. He had a culture. He won. Listen. Jesus did not pray when he walked on the waters. He insisted. This water, you will carry my weight. He insisted. I do not sink in life. I win all the time. Yes, sir. I win all the time. In my education, I win all the time. In my relationships, I win all the time. In my marriage, I win all the time. In my finances, I win all the time. In my job, I win all the time. In ministry, I win. I win. I win. Because the Jesus culture is at work in me. I live the Jesus culture. I believe it, I live it. I believe it, I live it. I'm a helper. I insist on helping.
achieve this week? Talk to the Lord about it now. Insist on it. Father, I want this, I want that. Tell him. Now, there's no such thing as praying in your heart. It's not in the Bible. You pray with your mouth. So tell the Lord what you want. He's ready to give it to you. Oh, no. 